Hi, I'm Scott, and this is Azure Friday. I'm here with Stefan talking about Azure websites. Uh, what if I wanted to add SSL to the Hans Winnitz website? Yep, so we have full support for uh, both what's called SNI SSL, as well as the more traditional and familiar IP-based SSL in Azure websites. Um, as with some of the other more advanced features, you do have to have your website running in standard mode okay. um, in order to access the SSL features. And once you've scaled up and you're running in standard mode, um, from there it's just the usual steps of you giving us one or more SSL certificates, mm -hmm. um, uploading it into our system so that it's associated with your site, and then what happens is dynamically at runtime, um, we will go out and automatically set things up on our load balancer tier so mm. that the correct cert is associated with your site. Okay, so this is something that is not related to domain names. Once the domain names are handled, I'll go and buy the SSL certificate for that domain name. Correct. Now, you know, of course, again, always a, a word of, of warning. It's not, you know, anything specific to Azure websites. It's when you deal with SSL certs, you do as a customer have to make sure that the domain names you bought actually correlate to the domain names that you're putting onto the SSL certificate. Indeed. Right? So, uh, you know, you don't want to have the cert that's registered for foo and try to put it on the site bar because you'll get a big fat SSL complaint in your browser. And uh, in the video where we talked about setting up custom domain names, I was uh, saying, well, there's, there's naked domains and there's www. And so again, this is sort of getting into the esoterra of SSL, but you can get uh, what's basically, you can get an SSL certificate from various vendors that allows you to associate multiple host names on the exact same cert. Um, I think uh, GoDaddy, for example, calls it like a UCC cert. Um, in technical parlance, there's an attribute called the subject attri attribute uh, name, SAN, SAN. And what ends up happening is when you order the cert from your from your vendor, mm -hmm. you give it the primary domain name like www, you know, leftkeys.com, and then in that SAN attribute, you're basically adding additional domain aliases, which also get included in the cert. Mm. The nice thing about it is, for example, here you have both www as well as some naked domain names. You set that all up between the uh, the SAN attribute and the primary host name for the cert. And when you upload it to us, and we you know, set it up on the front end for requests against either domain, from the point of view of how SSL works, the cert will still be valid, well-formed, and you'll get that nice green bar mm -hmm. um, in the browser. So I'm, I'm, if I understand correctly, I'm paraphrasing, I could go and buy a you know, regular cert for one domain, yes. www.whatever.com, yep. and it will only work for www. Correct. I could buy a wildcard domain, which would cost a lot of money, yes, but it would work for foo.bar, whatever, exactly, com or get a multiple domain right. SSL Right, and it will work for the specific ones that you explicitly configured into that cert. Which yes. aren't necessarily subdomains. That is correct. You could go wild and put them all over the place. Um, now, if we click on the Upload a Certificate tab, I'm wondering here, okay, so yeah, ultimately just in terms of, again, SSL minutia, um, we need a PFX. So that's basically the cert plus uh, a password. And of course, you can see here, we will ask you for the password because once you give us the PFX and the password on our system, we're going to use that to crack open the PFX. Mm -hmm. And then what we do behind the scenes is we literally re-encrypt everything underneath the hood, store it off in a, you know, in a, a safe location, and then set things up so that we now realize for this website, and let's assume you've got a cert with all of all of those uh, those domains on it. Mm -hmm. We'll set it up on our load balancers so that when the request comes in, the SSL negotiation successfully terminates, right? So your browser doesn't complain. It will actually see that, oh, Scott was trying to go to HTTPS, www.hanselminutes.com. It saw the correct, well-formed cert, and so the browser is happy, and then from there, Right, the, the request response continues and everyone's happy. Right, and even though, like we talked about before in the video on custom domains, that IP address represents the load balancer, not the machine. Right. You're going to make it a completely secure all the way through. Uh, yes. Now, like I said, the I don't think we'll go into it here, but there is also, in addition to the certs, there is an option that if you want to buy a custom IP address for your site, mm -hmm. you can certainly do that. And again, ultimately, that's that decision is in, in large part driven by your customer base and what kind of browser support they have for SSL. Mm -hmm. We actually see the SNI SSL certs are very popular because, right, most smartphones 
browsers running on machines, they're all advanced enough that they can handle SNI SSL. But if you need to support like everyone back to the dawn of time, you need to use IP-based SSL, and then that, that option is the best solution. So SNI uh, is the kind of the modern browsers, modern OSs. It's the cheapest option for yes. SSL. Yes. And then IP is the most compatible but costs more. Exactly. That's what it boils down to. Okay, cool. SSL on Azure websites. This is Azure Friday. Thank mm -hmm. you.